Hi guys and good morning. Just gone seven forty here in London, Wednesday the twelfth of June. Hope everyone has had a, a good week so far. Um, you can see uh, from the headline at the bottom, U.S. stocks week long win streak uh, has ended here. We'll just have a quick look over the charts from yesterday before going through some of the the stories overnight. Uh, the man on my right, who I'm sure we're all very, very familiar with now, uh, starts his leadership campaign today. So we'll go on to, to talk about what that could potentially mean uh, on the day that Labour also look to try and uh, pass a bill through that might just swing things uh, a touch. Having a look at those charts, uh, bringing up the, the S&P here, you can see yesterday we did, albeit make a, a new high for the month, uh, come back lower and we're just testing actually a pretty key level that the gap open uh, from this weekend you can see we're just trading uh, a tick or so above that now so we're keeping an eye certainly on the futures at 2878 uh, as a good level of support uh, or your line in the sand if we do get below that then you might start to see things further tick lower 20 minutes or so obviously we've got the uh, the European open and, and see what DAX uh, does as well. It was a good indicator yesterday morning for that push higher above that key resistance level uh, to, to lead a push on only to come back down in the afternoon uh, with the US uh, as well. What else did we, we have yesterday other than US stocks on the move? We had some data out of uh, the UK you can see here just on uh, investing.com uh, those numbers if we zoom in here the average earnings better than expected uh, including and excluding bonus 3.4 and 3.1 percent decent beats of of expectations the pound uh, had a decent enough move considering uh, usually off, off uh, these figures surrounding uh, still with, with brexit going on the market doesn't give too much away uh, we did push higher above the pivot went to, to test our one which we talked about in the briefing yesterday as a good level of resistance I guess the first test of it uh, around 11 held quite well before finally hitting it later on and I would still have that marked up 127.37 uh, on the futures. Those uh, numbers uh, for the uh, the growth, weekly uh, earnings growth you can see while well, they did beat uh, the expectations we are on a decline now from late last year beginning of this year uh, for both the including and excluding uh, bonus drifting back down uh, to uh, near three percent so not looking all rosy despite the fact that uh, it was a bit better than expected uh, with the pound uh, not just with um, this data coming out but uh, with the uncertainty perhaps of brexit not in the way of too much movement that could uh, all change today uh, boris as i mentioned starting that leadership campaign uh, the first real time he's, he's going to go public and answer uh, any questions. He's kind of been letting everyone else do his work for him, uh, if you like, as we've, we've seen uh, you know, overnight um, uh, Rory Stewart uh, talking uh, uh, up Boris Johnson and all the others. So, um, this, you know, Sajid Javid also talking about Boris, which we'll come on to uh, as well. Uh, it seems to be that they're, they're more talking about him rather than their own campaigns, which uh, seems to be the way politics is going now. Uh, also overnight, if we switch back to the headlines, we had the API uh, out in the evening, 9.30 usual time. Uh, the headline bit over a bit of an over exaggeration, but yeah, oil did push lower into the back end. Uh, of the session and we're now flirting around $52 handle. Um, crude came in at another build, 4.8, so surprise build there, a 5 million or so, 6 million nearly change of the expected figure which was supposed to be a drawdown of one. On the charts, how does that look? We can see near that $52 handle in the futures. If we put this back to last night and just circle the area uh, of the API, you can see a relatively limited initial first reaction. We have drifted lower ever since. Uh, and there were some other comments out overnight uh, as well, which have uh, failed to reignite uh, the, the crude oil to the upside. Uh, the idea that OPEC might be extending uh, the production cut, just failing to, to get oil higher. Oil drifting lower into the back end of the, the session, of course, didn't help stocks either. Um, but we'll 
uh, keep an eye on the DAX as that is just testing its low of the day as the S&P testing that gap fill. Uh, also this morning you can see very much risk off. T notes is bringing into the picture now up towards the high of the day. Keeping an eye, I know it would be very early in the morning, it would be a bit of a surprise if we were to do it, but the idea that we could push higher and then uh, fill the gap here as well on T notes would be worth keeping an eye on. Gold helped by a bit of a weaker dollar at parts yesterday, but more so due to the fact that stocks had been weakening, we pushed higher, and that has continued again this morning. And same for T notes, just like equities, keeping an eye uh, on these gap fills, whether there would be an opportunity to get short or it's long to, towards there, depending on your bias uh, as well, is worth keeping uh, a close eye on. As well, you've got the, the Japanese yen, which I'll just bring into picture, pushing higher quite nicely. Uh, this morning R1 along with the high that we had back on Monday uh, worth keeping an eye on and yes you guessed it the idea that there could be a gap fill also uh, worth keeping an eye on also overnight uh, we had some numbers out of China for their inflation was in line the month for month slightly worse than expected uh, not the biggest way uh, in a reaction of markets uh, off those numbers but we have drifted lower of course with equities at the moment uh, just snapping a win streak whether the longer term uh, sort of or shorter to medium term bias of stocks has changed I'm not too sure I think it's very much expected that uh, Trump and Xi are going to meet at the G20 uh, but there has been some half negative comments overnight which we will come on to in a touch which might just be part of the reason why we have started to come and drift a bit lower. Uh, so Boris starting uh, his his campaign today, launching his campaign to become UK Prime Minister. Uh, quick look at the odds for the next Prime Minister. Uh, via odds checker here, you can see pretty much uh, odds on favourite. Boris Johnson, I think the best price you can get, seven to 10, uh, which, or four to, four to six. So yeah, less than evens. Jeremy Hunt second, Michael Gover slipped back down to to 14s or 12s depending where you're looking um, but Boris very much the, the favourite starting his campaign uh, today with a promise to get Britain out of the EU on October the 31st of course easier uh, said than done um, he is of all the of all the 10 uh, the one who has said by far the least um, about how he would tackle the biggest problem that is that, uh, that the nation faces his uh, launch event will be the first time he has faced public questioning in months uh, and talk about how people have just been talking about him will do the work for him. Um, his, I think his, his stance on Brexit over the, over the months before was, you know, we will get out no matter what. No deal perhaps might be his favoured way. Um, and if we go back to the pound just looking from I'll just bring this up showing here from the beginning of May a lot of the the down move has arguably been priced in for the uncertainty uh, with uh, obviously Theresa May leaving Boris Johnson looking like the favorite to come in we have had a bit of a recovery helped by the the dovish Fed uh, I, I do still feel there is a bit of Boris Johnson no deal to be priced in uh, to these markets he you know was staying last night uh, or recently you know according to his office we must leave the EU on the 31st of October we simply will not get a result if we give the slightest hint that we want to go on kicking the, da the can down the road with yet more delay delay means defeat um, also last night and, and this is probably to be taken actually I would say definitely to be taken with uh, a pinch of salt uh, there was a, a poll from uh, the Telegraph uh, stating that Boris Johnson, of course, for a 140 seat majority at general election if he becomes Tory leader. Of course, Boris Johnson, uh, you know, who has a, a column at the Telegraph, this poll here may, uh, you know, well, is more than likely to, to be swayed in his favour, just like if. Uh, it was the other way around and, and Osborne was running for something, you've got to imagine the Evening Standard would have him as favourite. So I wouldn't really read too much in, in, in the way of that. Uh, but here stating that 140 seat majority at general election if he was to run uh, at the next general election. Uh, 
up for debate whether that would be true uh, or not. I mentioned a lot of other people have been doing the talking for him. I mean, if you're Boris Johnson, you're absolutely loving this. Uh, everyone that's coming out is talking about you. Uh, Javid yesterday uh, was, it was arguing how Johnson was the, the wrong choice, I believe. Now, more than ever, uh, there is a moment for a new kind of leadership and a new kind of leader. Uh, a leader is not just for Christmas or just for Brexit. So we can't risk going with someone who feels like the short-term comfort zone choice. We need tomorrow's leader today. Very, uh, very nice speech there from Javid. But I think with the way it's, it's, it's looking at the moment, Boris Johnson is going to be uh, a nailed-on favourite. Uh, we'll come on to Labour's influence in this in a moment and how that possibly could change things. And that is something to keep an eye out uh, today, um, or later on today, I should say. Uh, also, you had uh, Rory Stewart, who, by, who has done by far the most talking, and fair play to him with all the videos he was doing, despite obviously getting caught with his hand, uh, not actually filming himself. Uh, he's done uh, a lot of talking. It is quite fresh to see uh, a change from all of, uh, all of recent times and, and what politicians have been, have been doing. Uh, he launched his own uh, campaign on Tuesday evening. Uh, taking aim at Boris as well. I see everyone talking about him. It's just making him, you know, more and more popular in my opinion. Um, I don't want to make this too personal, he said, without naming Johnson. But do you really feel that this is the person that you want engaging with the detail of the future of your health and education system? Is this the person you want writing the instruction to the nuclear submarines that you want embodying your nation at the world stage and guiding it through the most difficult choice that Britain has faced for 50 years? Uh, I mentioned yesterday uh, when uh, Boris was, was mentioning how he's going to raise the, the 40p tax bracket, how many texts I got from people uh, saying, yeah, I would definitely vote for, for Boris. His popularity is, has, gone, has gone through the roof recently. He's the pop star of politics. Everyone knows who he is. People call him by his first name. You know, everyone was, you know, it's Theresa May, it's Boris, it's Bojo. Uh, he, I think, will win. Uh, a general election. I think the, the poll that Telegraph are, are stating here is obviously biased, but I think if it was to go down that route and he was to deliver Brexit, I think, to be honest, he's Conservatives' only uh, choice that they have of actually having a chance of winning the next election, uh, if they were to, uh, of course. Everything that's that's gone on, uh, I think, has, has damaged Conservatives and Labour so badly, but I think they need Boris, uh, as mad as that sounds. Um, we also have what, what could be quite interesting uh, today is Labour seeking to block the No Deal. So this vote, uh, as or Labour, have, if you can see here, have tabled a cross-party motion uh, to try and stop a future Prime Minister pushing through No Deal Brexit against the wishes uh, of the the MP. So this could be quite key if this was to get passed and come the 31st of October, the idea of a No Deal uh, is, is say off the table. Well the new leadership uh, or the person they get in for, for the leadership may then start to, to get swinged. If, if, it's, if this no deal was off, well, suddenly if we go back to uh, those odds, Boris, Hunt, Gove, uh, Leedsom, who have all talked about a no deal, well, suddenly they're not going to be able to do anything. They're not going to be able to have that, uh, that influence uh, by taking this hard stance that they may well do with Europe and say, listen, come what October, if we haven't got anything, yeah, we're gone. Uh, and it might then start to increase the chances of, say, this, uh, you know, this outsider at the beginning, Rory Stewart, who is perhaps a bit more pro-Remain than the others, um, to, to start getting more headway in, in this leadership uh, race. Of course, the end of this res uh, vote will happen before we know who the, the next Tory leader is. Uh, so, yeah, it's. It, it, I mean, it's only going to pass. It's, it's not obviously guaranteed at all. The motion will only pass if sufficient Conservative uh, members rebel and support it. Um, and it. I mean, if there's a, a quite an interesting point here. The free Tory. So the motion has cross-party backing, including from one Tory MP, uh, Letwin, who's supporting Gove in the leadership contest. But if we go down here due to um, the confidence supply agreement from the DUP the Tories have a majority of Parliament uh, of five however that only means then three uh, 
Conservatives have to vote for the Labour motion, obviously if all Labour back it, for this to be passed through. Uh, it did for a moment look last night that Rory Stewart was was going to back it. He did, however, come out and say that he had read the uh, the wrong... Is it up here? He did, however, say he read the wrong motion. Uh, he was getting a lot of stick at the time, and uh, it, it, when he, he did tweet this, everyone was like, oh, no, no, that's, uh, that's the way to, to go about it. Um, so whether this gets passed through or not, be something to keep an eye on. That's coming out later this afternoon. Uh, if that was to be the case, I think you probably would get a half decent rally in the pound on the idea again that this no deal uh, is going to be pushed down. So just having a look at the pound, where could we get to if this was to, to get past, well I think we get to the top of this range relatively quickly, uh, trading at 127.68. Uh, so keeping an eye uh, on that as well. Overnight uh, and throughout the session, uh, yesterday, of course, trade was, was still very much in, in the forefront of people's minds. And just having a look at stocks, you can see still finding a bit of support on that gap fill. Worth keeping an eye uh, on that uh, for for the t for the you know the, the early morning trade. Um, but we did uh, have some comments from Trump, uh, as usual, of course, not just uh, about trade. He was talking about uh, inflation numbers ahead of uh, today's release. Um, but he was saying he's personally holding up a trade deal with China and that he won't complete the agreement unless Beijing returns to terms negotiated earlier in the year. So that is what, if you're looking at this positively, uh, the idea is that at the G20 they're going to pick up from where they were back in the year and all's going to be good and they're going to reach this deal and stocks are going to go higher uh, from a trading point of view. Um, also going on to, to say, Trump, um, it's me right now that's holding up the deal. Uh, we had a, a deal with China, and unless they go back to that deal, I have no interest. So he's, there, he's, you know, he's starting up this, this hawkish rhetoric again. He's playing with the markets. He really is. Um, yes, a bit of profit taking. Yes, this hawkish rhetoric has continued, but he's going to more than likely last minute, even if it isn't at the G20, get this sorted ahead of the election. Uh, in my opinion, he's, he's got the Fed where he wants him. Yesterday he was tweeting um, about the, the dollar and, and how the Fed interest rate was way too high. Uh, we had a bit of dollar weakness off this. Uh, if we go to, to the Euro chart, these comments uh, kept coming out uh, in the back end of the session uh, around sort of, well, yeah, three o'clock, four o'clock. Yeah, and then into fire we did push higher on, on this dollar weakness obviously helping gold as well as mentioned earlier but he's not going to stop and you can just, sorry I think I didn't have the euro chart up there you can just see uh, that weakness in the dollar against the euro pushing higher in both the euro uh, and of course gold as well late in the session yesterday uh, so he's going to continue this rhetoric I, I do think he's, he's got this market where he wants um, again, ahead of these releases today, the United States is very low inflation, a beautiful thing. Um, so to sort of saving himself if it is a bad number, perhaps. Um, on Tuesday uh, in Beijing, a foreign uh, ministry official uh, mentioned, uh, we have noted that the US publicly stated many times that it looks forward to arranging uh, a meeting between uh, the US and, um, and, and China. Uh, if we have this release, uh, information, we will release it in due time. Um, there's, there has been a, a couple of, of comments where, uh, certainly from, um, certainly from within China, that they don't want to, to be bullied uh, into it. Uh, China state media has ramped up nationalist rhetoric. The Communist Party's flagship People's Daily newspaper they ran a uh, commentary last month saying China will never make decisions that give up power and humiliate the country. Uh, whether this could really develop into a story that uh, means that Xi isn't going to go to the G20, isn't going to uh, you know, fall into to Trump's hands or not, I'm not too sure. But again, it's worth keeping an eye on, on any developments from this. And it, it could, of course, uh, weigh on things short term in the build up to the, the 27th and 20, uh, the 28th and 29th, uh, where the G20 is held in, in Japan. Uh, however, on the flip side, does Xi have to? Um, the, the, the economy has taken uh, a pretty big beating. Um, the argument to me comes down to the need to prevent greater economic uh, damage. 
the Chinese imports of May uh, tumbled, underscoring domestic economic weakness that could hurt global growth. For China, 25% tariffs could result in a drag of nearly 1% or global growth by 2021 if they were to remain in place. So they kind of do have to do a deal. I think Trump knows he holds the key here and is just stepping up this this rhetoric. Uh, whether that means we're going to have a, a big down day to not, I'm not too sure. Be worth keeping an eye on DAX right now uh, for a guide for early morning sentiment that's just pushing to the low of this increased volume. And your line in the sand for the, the S&P can pretty much be where we're trading now, 28.78 the gap field below here then we start looking at uh, a negative week above here we still remain positive um, and that's the, the really the, the way I would look at it um, also if we just have a, a quick look at the, the calendar for things that could influence uh, stocks today we do have the inflation numbers out of the US in the afternoon that would be the the most important thing to to focus on at 1.30 uh, we, we do have some speakers I know Draghi speaking uh, in just over an hour um, and then we have some further ECB speak throughout the after uh, the morning and into the afternoon. But the main main release today to keep an eye on will be those inflation numbers. The core expected at 2.1, the, infl uh, the headline at 1.9. Let's have a quick look on uh, trading economics at those. Uh, you can see here relatively stable around that 2%. So if it was to come in anywhere near that, market's not going to blink too much. And likewise uh, here for the, the headline inflation rate around that 2% is not really going to uh, influence things too much. What does a good number mean for stocks? It's a tricky one. Probably get a, a knee-jerk reaction to the upside to, to come back down. I think any really good number just will uh, decrease the chance of rate cuts uh, and therefore that would be seen as a net negative for stocks. Uh, but a positive number stronger for the dollar and you know, just looking at some of these markets of recent uh, time, bringing the euro into the picture just for uh, the recent trend to the upside, it does have a fair bit to perhaps uh, go down to uh, the, the, bad, the, the, the downside, the bad side, the downside if it was a, a good number uh, as well. So, yeah, I, th I mean, that would be the, the main uh, thing to, to keep an eye on uh, for sure uh, this afternoon uh, before we had the, the DOE. So, just going back to those API figures, you can see um, expecting or pricing in uh, a build around 5 million. So that's kind of how the market will look at it. Where oil goes from here uh, will be pretty key. Uh, we're just finding a bit of support this morning, but you can see around 50, um, 53.30 on the futures was where we started uh, before the API. So it's got a fair way to go to before recovering for that. The last two Wednesdays have seen decent pushes to the downside. Uh, and we have, we have to have a similar move as we did for last Wednesday's DOE. Uh, we'd be back down near uh, the low that we have had uh, as well. Those speakers, just uh, to, to carry on with there, you've got uh, Draghi 9.15 uh, and Kuer into the afternoon speaking twice at 1.15 and also uh, 4 o'clock. Elsewhere, things to keep an eye on going into... Uh, the uh, the best the rest of the session and the back end of the week you can see here we've obviously got the the, uh, the the consumer prices for May on Wednesday ECB Draghi speaking in Frankfurt 9:15 the race to succeed Theresa May heating up keeping an eye on Boris Johnson keeping an eye on this Labour deal how far that goes down and how that could influence the uh, the candidates favouring a No Deal um, also uh, we have. China and US releasing industrial production retail sales day, data on Friday. So ahead of the weekend as well, that will be pretty key to, to keep an eye on. Uh, just having a quick flick over the charts before we wrap up, you can see the DAX continuing its, its um, oh sorry, I didn't have the chart down there, it's continuing its recovery. I was wondering why that looked like it was on the low to see uh, the S&P finally support. So that's helping there with this gap fill. This would be the key level for stocks for now. It's your line in the sand below there. I'd be favouring a short uh, above here, looking at areas to go long. Yes, there is a couple of points to still be considered strong resistance. This trend that we broke early this morning, a retest of that will, of course, be an area to keep an eye on. Uh, and that looks like it will come in around 28, 25. The pound favouring uh, a bit of patience, I, I would say, ahead of any comments from Boris Johnson uh, and this Labour deal. 
uh, cross-party deal. But that does look like with a bit of dollar weakness this morning, it's just testing that key level from R1 yesterday. So that could be a, a level to look at should we get a breakthrough uh, to test higher up uh, as well. So dollar slightly weaker, starting off risk off, but stocks on a key level uh, of support from that gap fill. Uh, the Nasdaq doing the same around its S1. Hope you all have a, a good trading day. Any questions as usual, please do let me know. Uh, but if I don't speak to you, I uh, hope you all have a good session.